Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're talking once again about topology. So in the last section we talked about how we can set up to make topology nice and easy. In this section I'll be talking about the techniques that I use to fill in the shapes and how you can speed things up for certain areas. Once again remember to check out my website and the playlists in the description and the playlists on the channel for more free courses and detailed guides about what I'm talking about. Also make sure you check out my character course if you haven't already. Okay so here's where we got up to last time and I need to think about how I'm going to place my different faces over the object. Well, there's this idea of edge flow. If I use my annotation tool over here, you can see there's a natural edge flow going across here and up around to here, one going across here and down there, an obvious one for the mouth that goes around here, and I'll retopologize the teeth separately, one coming around here. So with all those, it's a good idea if your topology follows those kind of flows. It will also be intermingled with a flow that goes around our object like this also. So you can see how there's going to be a point where this flow meets this flow. And we need to try and maybe hook this up in this way. And you can see I'm going to have trouble just here where there's a triangle. And that's the tricky bit of retopology. Where these two edge flows meet We've got to somehow keep it to quads, try and keep the faces to a minimum. For example, in here, I could just come in here and keep going along here, and this one could disappear. But then we start getting smaller edges down here. So I need to figure out a way of linking these two loops together with maintaining a quad-based mesh. Now, don't panic too much, especially as a beginner, if you do have to have some triangles in there, because it's just too confusing to figure out because it's not a complete disaster. But generally speaking, it's much easier to model with quads because let's say around the eye, we wanted to have a bit more detail. If the topology is good, I can just do a loop cut around it again to add that detail. If I've got triangles in there, loop cuts don't go through triangles. So I'd need to actually manually go around cutting the new topology. Or if your topology flow doesn't work, you'll try putting in a loop cut and then it will disappear and go looping around all over the place somewhere else. I'll explain more about that later. But just know that the important rules are try and keep the flow of the object, try and keep your polygon count down as low as you can so you can add topology later and try and keep to quads. Okay, so let's rub all this out and show what topology might look like. So I'll just move this that I've already made into position so it follows a bit of a flow and I'm just selecting and pressing G to grab. Okay, so there's a natural line up here so I want my edge to meet that line. So this edge here can meet that line just there. And let's just move these vertices into position so they're the right size and nice and even. And then from here, I'm going to E to extrude and follow this inside line. Trying to keep a similar distance, although these are gonna be slightly smaller because it's a bit more detailed in this area. So I'm just pressing E to extrude and pulling them out. Okay, so let's see how that's doing. Now it gets more complicated here because we've got this face sticking out here. So it's important to keep moving around your objects when you're retopologizing to see the full structure. So what we're going to need is to bring this one in here and some more detail down here. Okay, so let's bring out the knife tool and consider where we need to make a cut to add some topology going up here. Let's try in here to start off with, cut there to here and then press enter and then G to grab to move this onto the surface. So it's working its way around there, that looks good, but we have a triangle. So whenever you have a triangle, generally speaking, you're going to cut one of the edges in half. So let's take this one for example just here, so into edge mode and select that, right click and subdivide. Now we've got one vertex in the middle there, so if I go to vertex mode and grab that, I can then pull that up and we've now got a quad base mesh, but we've got what's called a pole. And the pole is any vertex that has more than four edges going into it. Now that doesn't seem right at the moment because it's actually got four edges going into it, but eventually it will have one coming out here for this inside loop here. So this will become a pole. And these ones that are actually currently poles because they have three, they'll become normal because they'll have vertices coming out here. I'll just quickly model that by selecting these edges across here and extruding them out into the middle here so you can see how that's going to work. So like I say, we have a pole here that has more than four edges going into it. Now that's fine to have that, but generally the rule is that you try and keep poles to a minimum. 
However, again, as a beginner, that can be really tough and you need to practice that to figure out where you need poles and where you can avoid them. So try not to panic and worry about them too much. And you might find when you're retopologizing that you're putting poles in and then you're actually finding that you don't need one so you can readjust your topology a little bit later on. But that side of it all comes with experience. So that's a guide about where to put things and I'll show you more about that later on when I start covering the whole mesh. Now for different ways and different tools of creating the topology. Well, generally speaking, it's fairly straightforward and we can grab an edge and extrude and pull out and I'll come into the middle with this one. I'll just make sure that on my mirror modifier that clipping is enabled so when I pull them together they actually do snap and clip and I'll even my topology out slightly. But what about in here where I've got vertices and edges? Well some people like to use the poly build tool and I'll do a separate video on that but you can just simply grab some vertices E to extrude and pull out following the line and I'll come into there and then Go to edge mode with two, select an edge and press F to fill and it will fill those edges in with faces. So the F key is really useful for filling in faces and building up your mesh. You can select a line of edges and then E to extrude but you have to be a little bit careful at places where they join together and you might have to do some manual adjusting and then fill in the last face between them. Also be careful of selecting lots of faces together so I'll go to face mode and select uh, this group here and moving them together because of this snapping issue in the middle there and just the distortion of geometry in places but that's a reasonable way to do things selecting lots of geometry together works just fine proportional edit as well is another way of doing things so it's a bit like sculpting if I click on proportional edit go to vertex mode and then G to grab I have my circle of influence there which I can change with the wheel and move around the vertices that are next to the one that I've got selected. Often when building the mesh, you can select something like a face and just press Shift D, move it across to the side and start modeling a different section. Just try and keep a similar size of topology to the rest of the mesh. Obviously there'll be detailed areas which is a bit finer, but generally speaking, we wouldn't want to go too detailed here for example, because it wouldn't match up so easily. So do look around you and see how the mesh is going to match up. In this case if I press E to extrude it wants to stick to the horn there so sometimes you just have to watch out with the snapping tools and it takes a little bit of fiddling about and moving around to get the right position. This technique of duplicating a face and moving it into position can be a good way of mapping out the important areas so like I say this nostril here I can build up the edge flow around there and at this point I want to join these two together now it's best to have a good edge loop going around objects as I mentioned earlier so we'll want to snap these two together. Into vertex mode we can select them both M merge at center that's probably the easiest way these two as well M merge at center or you can use the vertex snapping tool and I can select a vertex and just G to grab and snap that onto one of the other vertices. If you snap it onto another vertex, make sure you've got the merge vertices option um, selected so that when you grab and merge it onto another vertex, it actually disappears. Now that's not working at the moment. For that to work properly though, you must have it project onto self ticked. So if I press G now, it will actually snap to itself and not just the vertices behind it. And now those two vertices are merged. So I'll undo that and I'll turn face snapping back on. So that's what the option project onto self does. If you want to snap your vertices together or any aspect of your shape onto itself, you have to have that ticked. What about for items like the horns or the neck? I would approach those slightly differently. So if I go to face mode and select a face and press shift D and move this over and then start moving these into position a bit more. It's a bit of a pain to E to extrude all the way around and then build that up slowly. What's much easier when you have an object like this, if I undo those steps, is to shift A add and add in a cylinder. Now the cylinder's going to try and snap to your object because you've got snapping on. So you'll have to disable the shrink wrap and disable the mirror in the viewport with the screen button whilst you're doing this and turn snapping off. It'll be much easier to position your cylinder. So all your snapping options are turned off have a look at the vertex count and see whether it matches your shape 
and 32 seems to be a good number for the size of the polygons. So now we can move this into position. So G to grab, S to scale, now to side view, rotate and move that into position there. I'll scale it down so it's relatively close, but make sure there's no bits that are sticking out. Obviously this end is at the moment. I'm not worried about the end at the moment. And now we can go in and start editing our mesh so it will stick to our object nice and easily. For the moment, I'll delete the end faces. You can do this technique with mesh on the end, but it's far more difficult. Just to simplify things for demonstration. And I'll do a loop cut to even my topology out. So in this case, it was 11 cuts. And at this point, with my mesh surrounding my object, we might have slight problems here, but I'll talk about those in a second. Make sure it's surrounding your object and not intersecting it. So if I, with proportional edit, grab this, make sure that it's not intersecting it like this. And we're going to turn our shrink wrap back on. And you can see that topology then shrink wraps to our object. So we've got some problems just here. So I'll turn off the shrink wrap for now. And with proportional edit enabled, but still not with snapping on, I can select some of these and just press G to grab and make sure that they're not touching this edge here. The same for this one around here. Okay, so that looks like it's going to work now. If I turn the shrink wrap back on, it's still having a problem because it's still too close. So I'll turn that off and get it a bit closer. Again, just watch out for when it intersects. So around there is when it intersects. And just try again, turn it back on. And we're having problems this side, but not this side. I just remembered that it's mirrored, so I don't actually need to do half of this. So I'll turn my shrink wrap back off, quickly into wireframe mode to delete half my mesh here. And it obviously shares the modifiers with the original mesh because it was added in edit mode. So it is part of that original retopology mesh. Obviously I've got mirror turned off, so it will be there when I re-enable that in just a moment. Back to solid mode and let's see the problem vertice just there. So let's grab this face and just pull that in a bit more. And there's a bit of overlap there, so I'll just pull that out and it should work and shrink wrap now. Okay, so you can build up things like arms this way, legs this way, by using a cylinder and wrapping it around the outside of something and the shrink wrap does the rest. However, as soon as I turn the shrink wrap off, the mesh is actually still out here. And it's only the shrink wrap modifier that's making it stick to the mesh. So the slightly awkward bit is that I need to apply this shrink wrap to continue working on it. That way the actual topology will be stuck to the mesh as well as the shrink wrap modifier pushing it just above. Let's just check that our mirror's not overlapping so I can just select these edges down the middle here and just pull them out so that they snap together and the mirror works. And I should now be able to, in object mode, apply the shrink wrap. And now when I go to edit mode, it's all stuck to the object. And then I can go back to the shrink wrap and just add it again using the dragon and upping the distance slightly and making sure it's outside surface. So there seems a few steps to it, but once you get used to it, it's actually fairly straightforward and quite simple. So to put it simply, we're adding a cylinder. We disable the snapping options and the shrink wrap to move it into position. And then we add them once again so that we can see that shrink wrap happening. And then we actually apply the shrink wrap modifier so that it is actually sticking to the mesh. And then we re-add the shrink wrap modifier so we can start moving it about above the mesh once again. Okay, so those are some retopology techniques that you might find useful. Some problem areas you might come across, let's uh, try and extrude all these out together. It can work, as you can see there, and it's doing a pretty good job really, but sometimes you'll get some snapping problems and they'll sort of try and snap to the top ones and all sorts. So try and avoid that where possible and go for areas that you can easily see. So if I come across down to here, for example, let's just quickly turn on cage on so it's a bit easier. Make sure I can see the objects and make sure that horn isn't gonna get in the way and then E to extrude and pull out. Then come to this section here from here to the center. Make sure I can't, make sure this horn doesn't get in the way. Turn proportion, let it off. E to extrude and pull that out and just go as far as I can and then F to fill the bits in between. So you can build up in sections and then just fill the areas in between as you need to. So that's the techniques used for retopology. In the next video, I'll talk through the retopology of the entire dragon and the different techniques I'm using 
and obviously when to use those techniques and a bit about the topology flow. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.